I call the Dixon County Commission to order. Please stand for the flag salute. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do have a couple additions to the agenda to consider the, today. Uh, the first one is consider request from the sheriff to purchase a vehicle in his 2014 budget. And then also we have scheduled an executive session for attorney-client privilege. So with those two additions, I move that we approve the agenda. Second. The moving segment, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Consent agenda are the minutes of the January 9th work session and regular meeting. Payroll of $344,456.94 and abatements of $83.38. Mr. Chairman, I'd move that we uh, um, accept the consent agenda as presented. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Commissioner's comments and committee reports. Lynn, do you have anything this morning for us? Um, I'll just, just kind of something just to put it on the screen, radar screen for uh, consideration. I received notice, I believe, General uh, Funk is going to have a kind of an overview, I think it's called 2020 campaign, that he's going to be presenting on the 24th, I believe, of Friday. And um, might be something that uh, I possibly would go to, but I, mm -hmm. I think we ought to make sure that we have at least one commissioner there, if, and if more want to go, you know, okay. it's that information's out there. Where, so where would that be at? Then? It's going to be at the Riley Conference Center, I believe, mm -hmm. or well, it could be headquarters building. I'll have to check. Probably the Rylands Conference Center. That's where they have a lot of that stuff. And let's see, with the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday coming up on Monday, that's the regular time, or typically when Central Kansas Mental Health would meet. And so they went ahead and and, um, and they're skipping the meeting this month for January. So. Okay. Craig? Yeah, uh, we had some discussion uh, about our fitness program for the uh, county employees. I come into Abilene and went to Impact and got a firm price uh, for the county. Mm -hmm. it would be twenty-seven ninety for a single. Uh, the uh, manager said that's what the city of Abilene has the price being, and then that'd be forty-five forty for the family. I went out to uh, Great Life. Uh, they require a membership fee. And then ten dollars, and you have to sign a year contract. Um, so, I, it's my opinion, it wouldn't work for the county. Well, it wouldn't work mm -hmm. because you, they, the individuals have to pay themselves. They wouldn't let uh, draft it. You know, they wouldn't let us send a check to them every month. Yeah, so, uh, it is a nineteen ninety five. Uh, you can, you know, that's for the golf course. And there is, you know, Junction City and Salina. I think in stuff, but it just wouldn't work, in my opinion, for the county. Uh, that's one thing I had comments on there was up. Uh, oh, I did have a, I gave it to Brad uh, on the uh, safety issue with no smoking in buildings and stuff on the computer. A uh, gentleman from Alma. Our policy for that. Yeah. I'm not sure. Looks like they're doing the survey at different counties. Yeah, that's what I... That was one thing on the computer. That's all. Do you think we could put that fitness benefit like on a work study session and then maybe yeah. put it on the agenda next time? And well, because I think, I think we either need to kind of move ahead or just kind right. of let the employees know it's what, exactly what the price is going to work this time. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, we we need to make a decision on one way or the other. And we wouldn't necessarily have to do the full amount. Um, but, well, but, but anyway, there, but, there, there may be some ideas. Yeah. That. Well, and, 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 and I've talked to Brad about this before. But if we pay any of it, it becomes a benefit to them, so they have to claim that on their their yeah. income tax. Yeah. But yeah. So I don't think, in my opinion, Lynn, we don't want to, you know, do that because it does become more of a, you know, bookkeeping problem. Mm -hmm. But I guess the one benefit is if if we. Um, do this as a group, then that discounted rate and, and, because and, and talking down there, I don't, you know, the, the, the impact. If you come in, say, you're a county employee, and they have a, you know, deal, we don't have to go as a group. They're going to get the corporate rate. Okay. The way I and like I said, I thought that was perfectly clear. What you know, she told me and stuff that it's going to be just like the city of Abilene. Okay. So would would they be individual paying? Then, or would we, we could pay we, it? we'd pay it, we'd, we take would pay it, we'd it. withhold it out of there. We would have to yeah. withhold it out. Yeah. Okay. If I remember correctly, she said it has to come from one pay source. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we would have yeah. to pay them to get that yeah. discount. And, 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 if, and if that's if our employees want it that way, without if a county employee like Barb wanted to go down there, she could pay it herself and not come through the county. But if some of the employees want to have it withheld, that's an option where. Yeah, but like I said, the we could put it. I could put it out to the department managers and elected officials and ask them to report back at the next department head meeting. Yeah. I don't know if they have anybody in their department yeah. that's interested in that. If that would work, yeah. that might be the best avenue to. Because like they can do it either. Like I said, if, if they can do it either way. They can have it with health and their pay, or they can go down and and just show that they're a county employee. Take their ID and they can get the same rate. Okay. Anything else? Oh, that's all. <clears throat> uh, Saturday, I I did attend uh, uh, the 4-H uh, clubs model meetings that they present, and uh, got to sit in on a couple of those, and I I guess took me back a little bit in time, but they are still doing the same things. They are, they are learning parliamentary procedure, and, uh, and I think it was a very, like I say, I, I was quite impressed that, that they, uh, they were doing their parliamentary procedures right and, and training them for future leaders. So uh, I was very encouraged to see that. Uh, Yesterday I, I had the uh, juvenile detention meeting out Junction, and uh, we discussed several things. But uh, numbers do fluctuate over there. Right now he is pretty much full with 28 uh, residents there. 15 of them were from Salina, and so it, it seems like about half of the, half of our county is. We haven't gone through a whole year with Salina being there, but you know, from what it appears for the months that we've had, you know, they're going to be probably making up about half of the. But they also are paying about half of the expenses. So, you, you know, uh, we we did discuss a little bit in the future, depending on what Saline County does, you know, where they do do build a jail or whether they build juvenile facilities with it and, and this and that and so uh, but, then it, but I think now that we've got them we'd like to try to keep them because you know they are a part of it now and, and are if, if they uh, went away then we'd be back down to our lower counts and we'd be back trying to get other counties to come in again so anyway it's uh, we just discussed a lot of different options of what would happen in the future on that. Okay. We'll move on to presentations of petitions, proclamations, and other public comments. And we have Tori Brant with us 
Barrett. Barrett. That's okay. Barrett <laughs> with us today for the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, uh, last meeting we did move to join uh, the Abilene Chamber of Commerce and also the Harrington Chamber of Commerce. So I'll turn it over to you. Okay. I just, it's really quick. I won't take up too much of your time. Thanks for letting me come in. Um, when a new member joins or a renewing member, I go into the businesses and present them with their plaque or their sticker, whichever one they apply. And I wanted to do that at the commission meeting since you guys didn't make the decision. So just give that to whoever wants it. Lover, probably. And that's the, um, all the fun stuff that you well, get to read through. Okay. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Back. I don't know how you want to do it too. I'll just... Hold on just a second. <laughs> so, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Tori, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. While you're up here, I was just wondering um, because you've you've just been the chamber director for less than a year. Yes, that's right. And so maybe you could just introduce yourself and, and tell a little bit about yourself and kind of what led you here. And sure, <coughs> sure, I'll do that maybe too. Maybe your roots here in the county. Yes, uh, my name is Tori Barrett. I hail from Dickinson County. Harrington is where I'm from. Um, some of you, probably all of you know Everett Colling. He used to be a county commissioner, and that's my grandfather. And so... Um, that's the connection I guess I have with the county. I uh, graduated K-State in May 2013 with a bachelor's in hospitality management and leadership and business minors. And when I was doing the job hunt, I was made aware of the position at the chamber. My mom actually is the one who made me aware of it. She works here in town about Heartland Healthcare Clinic. So I applied and got an interview and they offered it to me and I said yes. And came back to Dickinson County and been here part-time since April of 2013 and full-time since June of 2013. So the first two months I was doing part-time with finishing school and trying to graduate and having the full-time job experience. So it was pretty busy, but it was pretty fun. And in June, we moved in offices. We're now Caddy Corner with you guys at the depot. We're in with the Convention and Visitors Bureau and the Civic Center. So that's in a nutshell how I got here and really excited and 2014 is going well for us all already. So, yes. any I can answer questions. If you guys have questions about chamber or me, I'm not as interesting as the chamber is. So. <laughs> well, thank you for stopping by. Yeah. Yes. Thank you guys so and, much. And like I say, we be working with you. I'm sure in the future on mm -hmm. several things. And like I say, I, I think it's going to be a good cooperation between everybody that, that we can work together. Mm -hmm. I think so too and it started already. I meet with a couple people at the county and economic development meetings and so it's yeah. going well and glad to have you guys on board. Yes. Well thank you. Yep. Very Thanks much. so much. <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, was uh, ready to, were you ready to start or did you want to, to do the uh, the bar thing? Oh, I can do either one. Probably we're close enough to the bar if you want to jump to that. Not make that wait any more like. Okay. Here's some things that update them. Well, on the, the yeah. resolution for uh, planning commission, yeah. I gave Craig a copy and it has her own name on it. Mm. It should be clear. Yeah, well, she just gave me this correct one, so. You have the correct one, but the second one from the bottom <laughs> should be Claire instead of James. Yeah, That's James was, should be Claire James James was not, so. Okay. Let's see, is this both of those are right? Okay. Okay. If you're, let me steal your old copy so I got one. Yeah. How's that? All right. Anderson? Carter Anderson? Anderson, yeah. 
Okay. Uh, Doug, we, we will go not make you wait any longer, and, and, and we will just go ahead and uh, let you take take over here. I'm Andy Vinson today, <laughs> for just for a moment. Anyway, she was planning to be here, but Dylan is yeah. in the family amongst her little household. Derailed that. I don't know that you'd met her. I did. Uh, well, we have he, but I didn't know if you had. So I think she's been here for the Yeah, she might have been earlier. Yeah, the meeting downstairs. Yeah. Oh yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Well, oh my goodness. That's why we're coming in person. Of course, <laughs> the explanation isn't near as heavy as the documents. <laughs> but just okay. consider what Dan was doing last week, Dan Hall, in regards to something pretty important of architectural design and cost estimating. He had it really in a nutshell. Well, you can't do that with environmental reviews, mm -hmm. especially if if you have Kansas Department of Health and Environment involved. So it's it's pretty active, even though there's no what I would call significant concerns for the Navarre Community Center. There are a few little ones, but from our perspective, or from the plans of Ryan Riffle, Gary Anderson, and such, they're not planning to disturb any of those. Mm -hmm. uh, say the asbestos down in the basement or a crawl space and the asbestos that was noted in another part of the building, they're just going to encapsulate it. So floor tile, mastic, so and such. Just kind of seal those areas off so yeah. they don't have One area that they could have some involvement of that because the Health and Environment Report noted that there could be some in caulk. It was common for 1930s 1940s caulk to contain fibers of asbestos. And so that would have to be removed carefully, bagged up separately, uniquely. So and so that could be could be window replacement kind of nice issue. So but otherwise everything else is fine in the neighborhood. Environmentally, yes, the septic tank will be worked out according to county procedures. Mm -hmm. So this process today is for your reflections on that, your action on that, and for us to have a notice with Tim and Janelle at the Abilene Reflector, whether it's Friday or Monday, so that they can publish there's no significant concerns environmental-wise with the Navarre Community Center. And we have to have that published and then seven days for comments, essentially. And one of those is for the county to keep, just in case somebody sees it in the paper and says, we'd like to look at this. Or ask the commissioners questions, ask Brad, Janelle, Doug, Barb, somebody associated with the county. Oh. You want each one of our signatures? No, no it's for the chair. <clears throat> for the, the fellow in the middle. So you just want my signature on Yeah. I've got one here you need to sign too. But yeah. there's our copy though. Right. Yeah. And I would suggest all three being signed, so yeah. yeah. Mr. Okay. Chairman, I'd go ahead and make the motion that we do sign this environmental study on the Navarre Canstack project. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Then from a timeline perspective, after the publication of the paper, the seven-day waiting period, we can gather the information from Dan Hall that he presented last week and you blessed and couple it with this environmental review and send things down to the Kansas Department of Commerce. So our overall objective is say the 30th thereabouts to do that. At least that's our deadline. Having things all down there to there by about that time. Their deadline is February 1st. For the following Monday, I guess, would be the 4 or 3rd. It's a postmark deadline anyway. And of course, they're technically waiting on Congress to act, at least the Senate to act as part of Congress on the appropriations bill. And House acted so the, so the tough crowd was taking action already and blessing these kinds of programs. 
president will sign off on it, according to his staffers. So. And Commerce can have the approval to go forward. After you're done with this, since I'm sitting on the front row, a couple of other items I might ask about. One's really for Brad, but it's one of those benefits of the Central Homeland Security Council kind of endeavors. So that's one item I'm curious about. I also want to talk just a little okay. bit about the wrapping up the Detroit side of things. Oh, okay. Sewer district. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. I was reading that. <laughs> you you read that thing? Yeah, well, I was going through it. I was. <laughs> Everybody has two ears. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I was. Well, yeah. in keeping things moving, in regards to the dispatch training, I haven't asked Sherry or and I haven't looked on the website to see how sign up is going for that. Or, I, I don't know. I didn't know because that's a it's a great opportunity for all counties in the region. Have dispatcher training, but I didn't know how it was looking. I guess I haven't checked, and, and normally they wouldn't tell me unless I check. I'll check with the rest and see. Maybe by the 28th, we'll have an idea yeah. on that Security Council meeting. So, but I'm curious because it'd be a nice thing to report to the overall board. We've encouraged it at least a couple times now, whenever that gets out, and we've emailed out to the pertinent folks different documents just to get signed up. Didn't come along very often, so. Not that price. No. No. The other item in regards to, well, I'll just skip and come back to Detroit, but okay. County took action, or you've had some statements in regards to the registration, the mortgage registration fees. Yes. And just so you know, almost every county in the 12 counties has done similar mm -hmm. items, and I didn't know if you heard that, but as a person that pays attention to what other counties are doing in the region. Saline County, I haven't seen anything formally and I haven't looked through all their minutes, but they probably will and they'll have a forum this Saturday with their legislators amongst others. So they will make some comments. Well, I think they had something Monday. Okay. Just just did yeah. probably on just Tuesday. Did. Yes, for Tuesday. Yeah. So it's important to every county and they're making their voice known, which is good. And of course, I've talked to legislators two or three times this week already and said, well, just so you know, this is happening. Last week when I sent ours to John Barker and Tom RP, they mm -hmm. both responded back immediately. Tom said he let keep me posted and monitor it. And mm -hmm. John responded back immediately and said, I support keeping it, just so that you know. Yeah, so. keeping it as is. And we were members of the Kansas Bankers Association, largely because of health insurance offerings at a discounted rate. Well. That changed with the Affordable Health Care Act. We could not be members and receive that rate, so we dropped being members. But we still received their magazine and newsletter in December of last year. <clears throat> that was the last month for us. And their editorial article advocating reducing that mortgage registration fee was in there, so we just sent it sort of, I did it without board's formal blessing, but I just sent an editorial comment to them. It wasn't so much that I'm personally against this, or North Central Regional Planning is personally against this, but it is a concern to lots of cities and counties in this region. And I just told them, here's what the Heritage Trust Fund has done in 12 counties of North Central well, Yes. Regions, especially in Abilene, but all over yeah. the region, the Heritage yeah. Trust Fund's been used, plus historic preservation tax credits have been used very nicely in lots of parts of the, the region. So it was uh, just education, I guess. Yeah, it would almost eliminate their program if they didn't yeah, see the Yeah, I think it funds. would both of them, yes. for sure. So. And from the county standpoint, uh, they're, they're, they're saying some other states don't have this, but what the other states have is a transaction fee when you oh, go to okay. file, which w could be just as much as what mm -hmm. this mortgage registration fee is. So whether you call it a mortgage registration fee or a transaction ex uh, fee, you, you know, I don't see 
that it's any different. So why don't we just keep what we got? So you know, yeah. it's, but it's just, but you, you know, they're they're trying to say the other states don't have it, but but they're still they'd still have a fee, which is doing the same purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's it's common. Yeah. And they may not have what I call the Heritage Trust Fund or Historic Preservation well, Tax Credit. Well, and they might not, and, and that might some get, states that do might get have something like that. Some yeah, and it's mostly to the east. But like east you say if, if, if they took it out, then there'd have to be something to yeah come back in to help reimburse yeah. that. So anyway, that's just one of those things. We're all on the same sort of advocacy of, yeah. of that. Not taking any more away than what you have had taken away, reduced revenue wise. On the Dickinson County Detroit project, from okay. my perspective, it's just an update of you, even though there's at least two persons in the room who could have already done some of that. Uh, the reseeding out there will hopefully take place once snow stops flying mm -hmm. and, and uh, soils warm up. That's probably as much of an importance. But it was nice that there was some moisture in December. For this part of the world, even though it's still needed in December or January, February, March, so that will help that reseeding. Yes. J and K, the contractor has been paid in full. Final change order has been processed. You know, let's run that round to the different entities. And what we need to do now is have the final cost of which we're, and I say we're, it's mostly Janelle's getting those, and we're documenting that. But it's everything from bond council costs to Secretary of State review of the bonds. And maybe we'll have, we should have a final Caw Valley engineering inspection invoice. So once we have all of that tallied, then we can have what I call a closeout hearing here on a Thursday morning That's for the commissioners for just receiving final input costs. And it'd be nice to invite, which we can do, but say somebody from Detroit, say Jennifer or somebody like that, who's been actively involved, and can say thanks, so to speak, so, for sponsoring that project. And although the other side of that is we still have some uh, bureaucratic strings, we'll have paperwork, but we'll have to do a civil rights fair housing notice for 2014, because we're closing it out in this year. And our little thought is we would just put a banner up. We have banners at the office that we run around from project to project, federal projects that, and or state projects that have that string attached to it, so to speak. But we can bring a banner and put it up somewhere public, such as around the courthouse, near the courthouse, someplace that's very visited by people on a less windy day. That's one option. We had things on the website last year that shared the county is an equal opportunity employer. It encourages furthering fair housing, civil rights opportunities, things like that. But we have to do something different for 2014. Any excitement with that? So, so it's a law, huh? Yeah, it's a, it's a rule. It's a, <laughs> it's a regulation. It's a requirement. It's a requirement. requirement. Uh, and, okay. And we paid everybody. I, I going back to the old days. Do we, we do we do another like a warranty? Is there any kind of warranty on? Yeah. Okay. And that was established. I told Josh. Did you see my email on that? It was August. He thought it was July, but so it's July, that's but, when it started. But I mean, you know, from a year from when it started. I mean, or I, it's going to be a year for nine months from when it was completed, or when kind of a you it's know, a one year labor and performance warranty from that substantial completion okay. date, which was August something rather. I don't have that for me. Was it 14? It was somewhere in August. So. so you'll be back out in August sometime and go through and look and make sure. Probably, I'd say June or July. Okay. I mean, just I just double yeah. checking to see if there's anything out there. And grass is one. That It's a warranty right. item. Well, and say we've got some selling around some of the houses. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, roads, you some know. road disturbance, right? Uh, you know, left station area, right? Uh, the rock around the the lift okay. station. There, that is, there is that is a plan. To, okay. As far as the ponds and the lift station, uh, all's got to be out there once a month yeah. by, by regulation. Yeah. It's right. All that. So if anything happens there, I'm sure he's going to let us know. But we need to keep a close eye on the streets and the 
yeah. the connections and stuff, right. make sure we don't have any settling and stuff. Or the generator doesn't start or something like it's supposed to. Yeah, or? and it starts automatically. We yeah, I know. It's just a report. Yeah. So if it doesn't start, he gets a notification. Yeah. So. yeah, and I saw him Sunday here in town when I was visiting uh, friends and relatives, and he said, yeah, things are going great, other than it, not much moisture. Uh, but that's just a normal thing in January, it seems like. It's been drier than normal. Yeah, so uh, keeping an eye on things is good. Warranty is underway. And I've asked this before, and I sh should remember who is the back. I mean, who has second charge there? If, if you know, Paul's gone. That does the reports if something had happened. He goes to Martin. But I mean, he does, he knows how to do the reports and everything. Well, the reporting, no. Paul yeah. would still do the reporting, and, and we did have the incident like up at town, for yeah. example. Paul was gone during that week, right. and, and we responded, and our people took care of it. But when Paul returned, he took care of the reports. Right, but I'm either, either he or one of his assistants at Enterprise that are certified would be the okay. ones who could do that's the reports. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. If we, is that on the, the uh, required to have who's, if Paul's not available to do it, who is? There's no requirement with okay. the state because okay. he's a designated certified yeah, operator. He's definitely but you don't have to have a backup then. No. Okay. They don't require it. It's just okay. good from a well, readiness perspective yeah. at the county to have yeah. that. Okay. And we do have a, you know, again, Talmadge was a good example where a year and a half ago we were having trouble. We have the maintenance supervisors from Solomon up there and, and everybody kind of comes together when we have yeah. problems. They're certified. If they had to, they could sign off on something. So. That's why when they need help, we try to help them because we might need our yeah. back scratch sometime too. And we have a very good working relationship with all the communities that way. So it doesn't make sense for us to send somebody and get them certified when we have those people with help right. so. Sort of has jogged my memory a little bit. And, and I don't remember when we were researching some things on Talmadge, but it's probably been a couple of years ago. Rural development has a way of sort of sweeping or flushing records. And, and Talmadge was one of the first projects I was involved with as an employee of North Central Regional Planning. It was a long time ago, about 86, 87, 88, someplace in there. Well, we didn't keep our records and didn't have them in electronic form at that time. And so we didn't have any, and the county was looking for some more. Maybe because of that or some other reasons I had forgotten, that was kind of the same thing on a, a Woodbine scenario, that they're looking for records. They're probably in the city hall, but it's just good to keep those for whatever purpose, reason, and Detroit will be that way. <coughs> keep the most important things. Now, fair housing activities, I'm not going to say that that's <coughs> highly important to know what you did in there, but items such as what you just mentioned mm -hmm. and contractor endeavors, undertakings, that's pretty important to have. You'll have updates as other changes take place on the facilities. In Grant Township, I guess it'd be a, another one out there west of Avenue. We've gone back so. to uh, just on that topic. We, of course, everything that we've done in Detroit from day one. Yeah, uh, the very well documented. I've got copies of everything in the computer. I know Janelle's got copies of mm -hmm. things that she's done, and uh, as does Barb. Uh, we've gone back on the Talmadge project and also on the Sewer District Number Two in Grant Township and got all those documents from those people and scanned them. So we have them in the computer now. Uh, what was the, what they had anyhow? There may not be all of them, but mm -hmm. I'm comfortable on the Detroit project. We've got everything because it, even emails, nothing came across that we didn't put into those files. Yeah. Because yeah. the next generation or generation after that may need that information. So. And on the three water district projects here. They've all kept their records as water districts, so what the county has is just a part of the water district development or expansion kind of thing, so, so those are all important to have some aspect of that, memory, if nothing else. It seems to be more important 20, 30, 40 yeah. years later. Yeah, when you're, <laughs> or when you have people that aren't associated anymore that are gone, departing, so. Yeah, I, I haven't been by Detroit. Was there going to be a fence around that lagoon? Well, there, there is. Yeah. It's, it's nice, already up. Yeah. Okay. Nice yeah. strong yeah. hold on. Okay. I haven't been by yeah. there for a while, so. Only so thing that's, that's really done. lacking, well, some a little bit of effluent here and there, but grass. grass. On mostly the 
east side, I believe, a little bit on that south exposure. So, and of course, you can't really see it. It's pretty thin right now. It's late planted, pretty dry fall, as you recall. So. Yeah. Well, like I said, it might have to come back and reseed. Yeah, something. that's planned, and the engineer is well, obligated to verify that. Okay. Anything else of excitement? Well, I guess not. Like I say, we will be working with you on the DeVar project for yeah, a while. Hopefully so. so. And Mandy will likely be the NCRPC contact, but I could okay. be engaged some of that. Okay. So. Well, I think it'd be an exciting project for them to it do. Should be. Hopefully, it will. Positive all the way all around. Right. Well, so you need two of those? Yeah. Whomever you want at the county to have this. Or if you want to scan it further, you can. Very good. If you're reading that, it's well, did I you read, get your reading? I'd like to get more of it. Okay. Well, and, and if, as far as, <laughs> well, I didn't realize there were 300, 600 and some types of asbestos. And yeah, could be in the there is. In that, <laughs> that brand. could be in the building. Well, no, I just, I can't remember what page I saw that on. There is some things. It's pretty comprehensive. It, historically, environmental back here that we included in regards to underground. 3,600 and some type of asbestos using building materials. Yeah. Hmm. See, so you, so you just learned something about that. Right. I didn't realize that. Yeah. yeah, you'll need a bigger file. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the biggest thing is front and back, so I haven't looked at the back pages yet. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, well, thank you Doug. See thank you, you Doug. Doug. Yeah. Yeah, where are we at now? Yes, Brad, are we ready to That's my start on your report? Okay, going to our list, you see uh, the Sheriff's Department has informed me they have a couple extra additions from opposite sides of the country. We're bringing one person back from Brooklyn, New York, and another one from Rancho Cucamonga, California. <laughs> I can say that two times. Not sure where that one's at. Yeah, I don't know. But so, yeah, it, it, are those costs that will be taken from diversion funds? So. Well, those people that will testify, or what is? No, it? those are actually the defendants. defendants. Those are the bad guys. Oh, are okay. Those are they are, and they're extraditing them back for to stand trial for whatever the charges are. So. Okay. Uh, the roof that we had authorized a uh, uh, month or so ago has been installed at the transfer station. And uh, they were finishing that up earlier this week, so uh, everything went as planned on that. Uh, we did make reservations for the Mac breakfast next week. And currently we have Lynn, Laverne, and myself. And if, Craig, if you decide to go, just let us know and we'll okay. yeah, call over. Not looking like it now. Oh, okay. I think well, I'm, depending on if I have to go to Beloit that day, too. And we can meet Janelle, here. when do we go to Beloit? 37 or oh, so. Oh, well, I might go. Seven okay, it starts at 7.30. Right? Yeah, 7.30. Yeah. Yeah. So meet, meet here. Meet here at 7 or so. And okay. Oh, well, I'll be glad to drive. Uh, you have a report in your packet. Uh, this is uh, from Janelle, the 2013 cash balance report. And uh, shows the ending balance. Balances in the various accounts. No surprises. Uh, and also the uh, year-to-date year budget report for all of 2013. The one that uh, is probably most interesting is the tax collections. <clears throat> and we did surpass what we had budgeted, yep. as we suspected we would, by $42,012. I just did this. It says estimated in the balance. Is that, is that really, is that total? I mean, is that correct, or is that just an estimate yet, still, Janelle? That's still an estimate. Okay. And the reason I have that on there is we will have a couple more 2013 okay. bills coming through. In particular, uh, in the highway department, we were paying for that Shoreridge okay. project, so that's still coming through. Some of them are probably the, what what's going to be the really final. Close yeah, that's what yeah. I. Yeah. When does this have to be com completely? We've got it shut down on the last uh, accounts payable run in January. Okay. We're no longer going to have 13 bills. Okay. Paid. So there's just a few odds and ends here and there. So. For the most part, I think it's safe to say that this. Yeah. this Right, it's not going to change much. Yeah. Right. So, put under sales tax. We, I don't know where that is. Uh, uh, let's get ahead. Shot 
Uh, a lucky shot of luck, but 42,000 is pretty darn close for what we budgeted. And in the black, that's even better, so I'd like to have seen it a lot better. We wish we were off a lot more than that in the black, but uh, that's where we were at. And, and of course, we can see, as we suspected, that August, September, uh, we're down a little bit. I'm sure probably because of the highway issue. Uh, but October, kind of back up a little bit, so I don't know. Yeah. I guess the next next one will be probably the last one that's affected by it. Probably so. So may not be been may not have been quite as bad as everybody suspected it was. More than inconvenience than anything. So. Okay, uh, did meet with the sheriff this week and uh, Chancy and I did about courthouse security and specifically the East Doors. We talked about that just to update you a little bit. We are planning to proceed with adding those interior, the set of interior doors as we talked a few weeks ago. We've gotten a bid from uh, Ryan Lady who is construction, is the one that did the other construction for us over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we felt like it was very reasonable and we'll Gareth, we worked out a couple concerns that Gareth had on on access and I think that would be the next step to getting us to control just one entrance in and out of the courthouse. Be card or punch button? Well, key. we haven't decided oh, okay. it would probably be the, co the code. Okay. I'm, I don't know, I have some personal reservations on the card. Well, I, if somebody loses it, you can get to it That's it. it. Yeah. Or, you know, if you, if you had a child that picked your card up off the dresser at home or, you know, somebody knocked your right. head outside and took your card, I yeah. mean, anybody could access, but it's pretty hard if, if you don't give up that code that's in the back of your mind. Well, and uh, <coughs> that's why we've always used the code. Uh, we can remove it easily and, and change it easily. Well, that, and, yeah, that's the thing. You can change yeah, it. Yeah. So uh, it's the integrity of that is going to be as good as, you know, us not telling anyone our code. So, and uh, it's a lot, a lot more difficult, or a lot more secure in my mind than the cards would be. Okay. So, and we don't have to buy cards. With cards, you have to buy them lots of a hundred, and they come at an expense. And, so, but uh, anyhow, we're, we're moving forward on that. Uh, we did last Friday, we kind of finished the findings on the right of way issue up on Key Road and 3600 Avenue. We compiled what information we could find after weeks worth of research, had Doug review it and review the uh, legal aspects of it. And we came to the conclusion that we do not have right of way in that section of the road up there that back in 1907 it was done away with when it wasn't constructed, I think, or 1910, give or take a, a couple days there, that uh, because we did not, the township did not construct that road, in the years. case law, that it went back to the, yeah. the property owners. So I did contact Mr. Mills and explained that to him, uh, sent a copy of uh, a letter with all the, all the data that we had compiled to him, uh, the bank, and also to the other property owner up there and the parties involved informing him of that. And it would be a private matter between the property owners to settle. So, so they, they would just have to work it out between them then? They'd have to work it out between them, either by an agreement or through the court system, one or two. So. I see. But it's, it's not an issue, not a county issue at this point. So, And uh, that basically but, appeared there. But so. the law does state that you do have to let somebody have access to their property, don't you? Uh, Doug has informed me that there are legal ways that he can gain access. That's true. Yeah. There's, There's several yeah. types of easements yeah. depending yeah. upon yeah. historically yeah. how they got on the property. Okay. Yeah. There's a easement by necessity, easement by prescription that can, that that may apply for him. I don't know all of their facts, so I can't tell you which one, but they, they are available. Yeah, and the only problem I what, what I understood it was the Federal Land Bank wouldn't, or whoever the lending institution wouldn't go with just having them, hey, you can have these right away. They, they, they want something that's they want it black and white. They want to have a mortgage yeah. that they have yeah. to foreclose on and can't get to their land right. without incurring that expense themselves. Right. So, sure. Yeah. 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 And then we went ahead. I did schedule for the 13th of February during a meeting our annual public building commission. 
mm. meeting for 2014, and the yeah. letters went out to the other four uh, commission members, and you have a copy of the, the information and the minutes from last year in your packet this morning. So mm -hmm. that's all we've got, unless you have any questions. <coughs> Okay. Uh, Doug, we, we did schedule an executive session. Okay. Anything else before that, or yeah. okay? <clears throat> Notices and communications. Uh, there's a couple of invitations here. Uh, the uh, <coughs> two of them um, from Fort Riley, and then there was a. An invitation in here also from Flint Hills Regional Council. And then uh, in my packet, uh, Janelle had furnished uh, the, uh, the, uh, the funding status uh, for the uh, commissioners here. Yeah, through the end of December. Through so the end of December. You did get on your budget. So we're under budget. Sure. Well, your department I'm, was. Let me rephrase that. Your department <laughs> was. So. Yeah. So, so I'm glad the commissioners didn't go over yes. their budget this year. <clears throat> okay. Uh, why don't we take care of this? one that we added to it that you ended to consider the request from the sheriff to purchase a vehicle in the 2014 budget. Okay. Uh, the sheriff had, uh, came to me earlier this week. They have two vehicles budgeted for 2014. A uh, little background on that. Uh, they have they attempted to get bids on the, the uh, two more Tahoes as they've been purchasing. Had very good luck with those and they seem to be working out very well. Chevrolet has quit making the uh, Tahoe for police service, and they're going to a new police uh, SUV, and I don't know exactly what the name will be, and a new plant that will start being made here towards the end of 14 and available in 15. Uh, in the interest of trying to come up with two vehicles to match this fleet now, uh, they did go stock to Holmes, and Holmes put the feeders out. They did find a dealership, I believe, in Texas that has some on, new ones on the lot, and they can get two from them, uh, assuming they're still available. <clears throat> and uh, so they got a bid from Holmes for that. The bid is 2% higher than last year's price, which would cover getting them up here and any increase there may be. And the bid is $33,202 each for a combined total of $66,404. And his request was to be able to go ahead and get those ordered and uh, get them in service. So he's going to be replacing, I believe, a Crown Victoria and a Ford Expedition. So and, and, it, and, and it is budgeted within his budget for 2015. So. And, and they would be the Tahoe's then? Yes. Still be the 2013. No, they'll be 14. Oh, they're, they still yeah. made them 14. Okay. Yeah, they, they've been making them for the last okay. year of 14s, but these are the last. Oh, okay. what's, what's on the lots now? Oh, is it, so. Yeah, that's right. The ones we got they, we got at the end of the year last year of 2004. Or, yeah. Yeah, when we first come and on. The new, next ones they come out yeah. with from this new plant will yeah, be 15. Right. So. Mr. Chairman, I'd go ahead and authorize the sheriff uh, to go ahead and have these two. 2014 Tahoes that are in budget, the amount is 66,404. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Uh, the resolution for the gap waiver for 2014. just a normal procedure we do every year as far as uh, satisfying the, the county. Let me 
read that whole thing? I just read the resolution number. Uh, the resolution is 011614, and it has to deal with the uh, commissioners uh, shall cause the financial statement and finances reports to Dixon County to be prepared on a basis of cash receipts and disbursements as it adjusted to show compliance with the cash basis and budget laws of the state of Kansas. I move we accept resolution 01164. One four. Oh, okay. I couldn't read it over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Second. I'm going to move the second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I'm getting new lenses. <clears throat> okay. The next resolution uh, is to to reappoint uh, Claire Anderson and Wally Wood to the Dixon County Planning Commission. And that would be for three year terms. Mr. Chairman, I'd move that we adopt resolution 011614A to reappoint Claire Anderson and Wally Wolf to the Second. Dixon County Planning Commission. We move the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, the next resolution is to re to reappoint Dennis Everett and Bill Van de Creek to the Dixon County Sewer District Number Two Board, and that's resolution O one one six one four B, and I so move. Second. Good move and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Resolutions. <clears throat> I don't believe we have any unfinished business today, so we will move on to other business. And we have a, a list of annual commission reorganization and, and county appointments. Uh, the first one is to elect the county commission chairman. And I move that uh, we elect Lynn Peterson. Second. That move and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. The second one is to elect County uh, Commissioner Vice Chair. And I move that we elect Craig Chamberlain. Second. We move and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We need a motion to appoint our county engineer, John Golf. Second. We move to say that we've approved the appointment of John Golf as county engineer. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. The next appointment is I move that we appoint Dr. Brian Holmes as our county health officer. Second. We move and second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> Set the office hours of the courthouse operations from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily for 2014 with holiday closures as set forth in the Dixon County Employee Handbook. Second it. Got moved and second it. <coughs> Point those hours. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. This one will be a change from what we have done in the past. Set official work session and meeting days and times for county commissioners. Currently we have in our commission meetings at, at uh, Thursday and we want to move the work session up to start at 9 a.m. instead of 9.30, leave the 
starting time of our commission meetings at 11 uh, for the for the meeting start and 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 continuing until conclusion. So, Seconded. Been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Designate the official county newspaper uh, for 2014, the Evelyn Fractor Chronicle. Uh, so moved. Seconded. Been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, I guess we haven't discussed this, but as far as the commissioners, uh, Lynn, you're willing to serve as a representative on the Central Kansas Mental Health? Yes. Okay, I'm so moved. Second it. And move the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I will appoint myself as. as Representative for the North Central Kansas Juvenile Detention Board for 2014. Second. Okay, been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Appointment to represent the uh, North Central Region Planning Commission Board for 2014. Uh, I move to appoint Craig Chamberlain. Second. Been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Designate the official depositories for the county uh, for 2014. Uh, the list we have is UMB Bank, Abilene Branch of Astro Bank, Solomon State Bank, Pinnacle Bank of Abilene, Dixon County Bank of Enterprise, First National Bank of Harrington, Central National Bank of Harrington, Citizen State Bank of Woodbine, First National Bank of Hope, First National Bank of Kansas, the Abilene <laughs> Branch. Second. It's been moved and second that we appoint those banking institutions as our depositories. Uh, it's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> Adopt the, the official fee schedule for 2014. And this will be published on our county website, and we, we have looked those over. Brad, you can, very few changes, but you maybe would, could mention what? The primary changes are with the uh, chemical uh, prices at the transfer station for noxious weed. Those vary throughout the year and at the beginning of the year, and we, by statute, sell those at a reduced rate of the cost. And, and then there's a slight change to the vaccine costs of the health department and we mimic the state what the state approves for those costs. Uh, other than that, I don't know of any other okay. changes that are of any substance. Okay, so I move that we uh, adopt those fees as that will be published on the county website. Second. So move the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Adopt 2014 payroll calendar as, as submitted by the HR director. We adopt that payroll calendar. Second. We move the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Adopt official employee pay grades scheduled for 2014. Uh, I think. Brad had furnished that information to us. Uh, and it is the same as 2013. There's no changes at all to it. So. Okay. And it, it simply reflects the base pay and ranges for the various right. positions in the county structure. So I move we adopt that pay grade schedule. Second. Can we the second? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, I guess we already did the, the gap. Or is this something more that we have to do? No, 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 no that would be the bottom of it. The only thing left is uh, yeah. the judicial district. No, thank you. Uh, we got uh, we appoint Kevin Harris as the non lawyer member of the 8th Judicial Nominating Committee. We appoint, we appoint Kevin to that position. Second. We move the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And we've taken care of the resident. 
the resolution. Okay. Something when I opened up mine. I don't know if anybody else got one from the Flint Hills. Yes, sir. Okay. An invitation. I, I just uh, was. I happened to open it up here while I was after I'd made comments and stuff. Got an invitation to the Flint Hills Council of Leaders. So, so it's not till the nineteenth, so we've got time to. Oh, you. Uh, to go on to that. Says RSVP February tenth. So yeah, I'm time, wasting time to do it. Yeah, I'd like to get a little closer to see what's. Yeah. Okay. That take care of the business, and so. we have uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman. On the, uh, we have executive session. Okay. Um, I just wanted to take time to um, thank you for your service this past year as chairman of Dixon County, and uh, I know you did took that on two years in a row, so you had a lot of extra responsibility in some ways, or at least in carrying us through the meetings and. I certainly uh, appreciate the fact that, you know, we have two new commissioners that have come on, Craig and yeah. myself, and um, I, I really um, appreciate the leadership that you offered and, you know, also want to take time to thank our department heads and our elected officials. Uh, they do a great job here. I think they're very uh, customer service oriented. They care about the people of the county. They care about their neighbors. Um, and and I think you know you certainly kind of set a good example for that. And Brad, thank you for the work that you do as county administrator because um, the reports that you provide us are just excellent, and it's made it uh, a much smoother transition uh, having those reports in the background and and all of the knowledge that you bring uh, uh, as well as as the others in the county. So just wanted to thank you. Well, like I say, there's, we always make some changes, uh, try to improve in what we're doing, and, and like I say, and also, like I say, we, we have a, commissioners have a great support staff behind us, so that, you know, it does make our job a lot easier, and, and uh, so that's, we always do appreciate that. How much time for executive session? 15 minutes, probably. Uh, anybody need to take a little break? or I uh, move we go into executive session for attorney client privilege at 12.03 for 15 minutes. Second. Okay. Good move and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And that was with Doug and Brad. Yeah. I need to, Barb? Yes. I need, I just realized this is the last copy of this I have. I don't know if you have any.
Welcome. Yeah. Pestles down, please. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Okay. I'd move that we uh, return to regular session from executive session. Second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We don't have any other business in, Brad, so. Uh, I got a question now. Oh, okay. Uh, could we get a, I mean, I don't know if the other, I'd like to have a pay scale, of, you know, where everybody's getting paid, you know, our new pay scale. You want the base scale or you want I want, I want everybody's salary. Just print it out next yeah. meeting so we can. Yeah. That's, a, that's what I give you. No, it was month. just an average. It wasn't what, like. Well, not the one I just gave you, but I give you that each month with the positions. Do you want names on it, too? Right, yeah. Okay. What, I mean, like, say Joe Blow's making 18 bucks an hour. Okay. I'll email that to you. Okay, okay. And it might, I know it's public record. Yeah, it's, right. Yeah. That's a, just in a work study. Yeah. 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 I'll email it to you if you want to print a copy. Well, what I like, because I've got 2013, and, and, and just for my information to see what the salaries have changed, mm -hmm. what, you know, 2.5%, 2%. All right. You know, that's just. That was, uh, <laughs> that was another thing we discussed at the Juvenile Detention Center was uh, how different counties do races. And uh, Marion County <laughs> does it kind of a unique way. Uh, they give, instead of like 3%, they might only give 1% or 1.5%. But then they give, I don't know if you call it a merit pay or something, and they might just give a certain dollar amount to every employee at the end of the year, like in December, it might be $300, it might be five. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of like a bonus. Hmm. And they said, actually, I said, well, how does that work? You know, everybody's getting part of that. I mean, they're getting, getting the same amount. They might, you know, the 1%, they'd be getting different amounts, but the, but the, the rest of that bonus deal, he said, we get more thank yous from our employees by getting that bonus at the end of the year than any other time that, that, that we ever get thanks. So, Probably for some of them. <laughs> but, you know, there are a lot more expenses right at the end of the year. And, yeah. and just to get a, a, a check, you know, at the end of the year apparently means a lot to employees. So that, Sometimes it's just the way it's delivered that makes a big difference. Just something to think about. I move we adjourn. Okay. Second. The move is second. We adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried.